each knife maker have his own recipe. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, when you cook, everybody cook with the same ingredient. We have exactly the same ingredient on the table. The difference is what kind of ingredient you chose and how many of these ingredients you're going to put on that. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 130 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. As you know, the place for knife newbies like myself and knife junkies like you to learn more about knives and knife collecting. And our Sunday interview show is where we get to hear from the knife designers, the makers, the manufacturers, the reviewers, anyone in the knife industry, anyone who loves knives. That's what we're all about here on the Knife Junkie podcast. And Bob, another great interview. Sundays never seem to disappoint. Who are you <laughs> chatting with today? Uh, Bastian Coves of Bastinelli Creations. I've been following him on Instagram for years and uh, just been a fan of his beautifully elegant and sort of wickedly designed uh, tactical knives for a long time. And uh, there are some intersections with uh, uh, his interests and my interests that just uh, just have always captured me. So Bastien Coves, Bastinelli Creations, I carry one of his uh, diagnostic two-finger uh, karambits uh, on me on a pretty much daily basis. And uh, it's a great little thing. And actually, my wife carries one when she runs and uh, makes her feel safe and secure. Bastien Coves, he's, he's an artist for sure. So it was great talking to him. All right. We're getting into that interview next. But first, I want to remind you that if you want to save on gas, we would appreciate it if you got the uh, Get Upside app. Our uh, show is uh, sponsored in part by the Get Upside app. You can get gas back on your gas, uh, cash back on your gas purchases. Just install the app on your smartphone whenever you need gas. Just search your area, look for savings, claim your discount, fill up the tank. It's really simple. Just take a picture of the receipt with your smartphone. You've earned cash back just like that, quick and easy. So go to the knifejunkie.com slash save on gas, the knifejunkie.com slash save on gas and start saving money today. Ever start looking for your next knife purchase before your last purchase has even arrived? Then you're probably a knife junkie. I'm here with Bastian Coves of Bastinelli Creations. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure. As we were just talking before we started rolling, I'm a big fan of your work, especially due to the kind of tactical nature of the knives you make. Uh, but they they also happen to be elegant, beautifully designed, and uh, great for EDC and and just regular everyday walking around kind of stuff. So uh, I, I'm really excited to have you on the show. I've been I've been following you on Instagram for a long time. I have a couple of your knives. I have a good friend who has a bunch of your knives. And uh, anyway, welcome to the show, sir. So how did you get into knives? I, I was reading on your website. You've been into them for uh, since you were seven years old, and and I can tell from looking at you, you're a bit older than that. Uh, how did you get into knives, and uh, you know what, what was the impetus to keep you going? You know, I'm. You know, the connection between between kids and knife is like always like very, very, very intention moment. Like a big, big, big important moment since since the beginning. I was a huge fan of knife, and uh, and uh, after a big collection when like I, if it was like twelve years ago. I decided to make my own blade on my side and I say, why not? I can probably make something on my side and try, you know? And the day when I decided to, to make the, the, the my first blade, the, the, the sensation I have in my hand, the sensation I have when I build the, the, the blade was unique. So at this time I decided to say, okay, why not? You know, why not to change my life and do this kind of stuff? Yes. But the love, the love between the, the love I have for the knife is like, yeah, since the beginning, I think is like crazy. You know, I'm a knife addict. Yeah, we, well, we talk a lot uh, to knife addicts here on the Knife Junkie podcast, as you might guess from the name. And it's funny, like for me, it's the same thing. Came from an early age. Don't know where it came from. I can probably piece it together. I make a story, but they are definitely a part of my life and a part of my aesthetic. So you were saying you had a big collection and yeah. you decided one day, instead of just buying other people's knives, I'm going to make your own. Before I ask you about your first knife, Tell me about your collection uh, that led up yeah. to that. Oh, um, I'm the first, I think the first uh, big brown I was fan since a while was Spyderco because my father was a policeman in France and carried Spyderco. 
uh, during during a long time. And um, step by step, you know, every time when you check some stuff, in the, because when I was when I was a little bit younger, was, you, you know, you don't have any kind of social media too much. Uh, the market was really in the shop. You know, you have to, right. to go inside the shop, check some stuff in your hand. And um, sometimes some some good review was in in internet, but not too much at this time, you know. And uh, and uh, so um, Spiderco, Benchmade, uh, Ontario, uh, because I you know I was uh, I was a big fan of some, some kind of survival blade and stuff like this. Microtech for sure, Microtech. Uh, very long story. Uh, in love with Microtech and uh, different kind of uh, lots of American brand. If I have to be honest with you, like uh, Gerber because Gerber was not too much expensive. Um, and, uh, some, some care show I have, um, I think I have like probably 70 or 80% of all my collection of knife since I, since I'm seven, I think something like that is more American brown than mm-hmm. European or something like that, you know? So yes, yes. Big collection of industrial blade more than custom blade, um, mm-hmm. because it probably, it was easy access for me. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, I love the, I love the idea about some, some industrial, um, process and stuff like this. And I have a small part of my collection is like full custom from different people in this industry. So that is another part of um, the feeling, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, it's understandable. You have a, a big collection. You're going to, you're going to veer towards the production knives, especially if you can get designers knives, you know, designs that you love from designers that you love, but coming down to you through more inexpensive means like CRKT or ZT or something like that, that allows you to have the designs of someone like yourself or, you know, Fox knives. I don't have to get a custom Bastinelli to get one of your knives. Um, so, uh, and you mentioned Microtech before. We're going to get to that later uh, because, oh my God, what you're doing with Microtech is so cool. But we'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that later. That's, uh, that's one of the knives on the long list of knives that I have to get uh, from you. But before we move to your knives, the collection that you had, did, were they more tactical oriented? Yes, um, I, I have some like traditional, uh, traditional blade, you know, from different, um, different culture and stuff like this. But it's true. Um, lots of my, of, my, of my collection is more like tactical military stuff, you know, mm-hmm. this kind of dark blade, generally like PVD or gray coating with Mikata or Paracord or G10 with toxification, 3D effect on the blade. This kind of identity, like when you look the blade like this, you say, oh, this blade is for military, is to go somewhere in the jungle, you know, and uh, it's not generally, I, yeah, it's not to make a toast or to make something like that. Generally, <laughs> I'm more like a tactical, you know, more like a really, really tactical identity. That is a blade I, I, I bought a lot. Um, and um, some kind of um, little bit smaller tool uh, to, to, to carry, like, like they say, like civilian in, uh, in the streets, because, you know, generally when we talk about the tactical journey, we have some big size of blade, something not really discreet. The, 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 the main change uh, since a uh, since few years now, some tactical blades that are a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller, and keep the same kind of identity, because people, uh, they have some evolution on the people how to carry blade and how use blade. But um, yes, it's true. Uh, tactical, tactical is like some feeling, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, for me, uh, and I know you, uh, y- you've done some Corsican knife fighting, which I'm going to ask you about. But for me, you know, as a kid, it starts out at, with the fascination with the weapon side of it, with the, with the outdoor uh, self-reliant side of it. And, uh, and then uh, as you age, you might need something more practical to carry around with you, but you never lose we that. Dream. <laughs> yeah. I saw you roll your eyes. We, <laughs> we dream, we dream a lot. Since we are kids, we dream a lot, and we continue to dream about something. You know, when I was kid, I dream about some movie. I dream about some character and so on the movie, like Rambo and all these kind of very famous people. Yeah. I can watch some action movie, and I say, I need this knife. You know, everybody dream on this industry. So it's for that. I think we 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 love the idea to 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 have something like from. From this kind of uh, from this kind of um, action movie and uh, some 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 good memories, you know, to give yeah. you the feeling you are part of that. <laughs> but, uh, well, it's funny you should say that because when I was twelve, I was Arnold Schwarzenegger. When I was fifteen, I was Sylvester Stallone, and now I'm John Wick. Now that I'm almost fifty, I'm John Wick. <laughs> I, I have this period of Steven Seagal a little bit on my side, you know. Yes, you know, but um, yeah. So what's it like? Okay, you you're in America, you're in Florida right now, but. Uh, you come from France. What's the what's the knife environment like in France? Uh, the stuff you have to know in France, everything is forbidden. 
uh, you can carry blade. Um, you, the, the funny part, uh, they have not too much restriction about the blade you can buy. Mm -hmm. So you can buy Balisong, Push Dagger, um, OTF blade, um, automatic, all the, 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 the crazy blade in the market you can buy in France like really easy. But uh, you can't carry any blade. Uh, fixed blade folder, uh, friction folder, and stuff like this are completely forbidden in the street. Uh, so impossible for you. So it's like more for the collection. You know, we lost we, in France. We lost is uh, this uh, this mentality to carry weapons, to carry tool like this. Because uh, now uh, knife is not a, is not a tool. Now knife is a weapon for some French mentality. Mm -hmm. So we are lucky because the knife community is big in France and lots of people don't respect really the rules and like the idea to carry something, you know, and, uh, and we continue to do that. And uh, that is, that is pretty cool. But, uh, but it's true. And our mentality and the, the law in France are really bad about, about knives. So nothing, nothing compared with, uh, with the United States. <laughs> well, you know, okay. So the United States does have some uh, stymieing laws and stuff like that. But yeah, we are allowed to carry, carry them around. It's a little ironic that uh, in France, you know, one of the homes of classical fencing and sword fighting that you can no longer carry a knife at all, not even a folder or a friction folder. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 horrible. Um, we we like I tell you, we keep some culture about this. Uh, they have lots of really good school about the screamer. They have um, I have the community about knife is like huge in France, and um, yeah. so that is pretty cool for us. But uh, but uh, but um, but for the rest, the, the law are really bad. The government are really bad for that. And is it hard for? Uh, uh, so I know a couple of uh, French knife makers. I don't know them personally, but David Lespec, for instance. Uh, he's someone yeah. that I, I follow whose work I think is beautiful. Uh, does he have problems selling that beautiful work in France? The real, the real law in France, it's you can build your blade, but you need a specific certificates or like diploma, uh, diploma. I think you say that like this mm -hmm. uh, to yeah. sell to sell your 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 blade. So ninety nine percent of all the knife industry knife um, knife maker in France who make blade are a little bit outlaw. So we, 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 we love that, you know, since the beginning, is, is that don't make any sense to, 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 to be able to, to build something and not able to sell it. So we continue to make knife show, we continue to make publicity and stuff, and uh, nobody knock on the door for the moment, so it's okay. <laughs> That's cool. They usually don't knock. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, so uh, I think most, most listeners probably know about your knives, but if they don't, I, I will explain describe them right here as i see them you have um all of the designs are uh i would say tactical first um but all almost all have very uh practical applications you could carry these all and just use them day to day you don't need to be getting into knife fights with them but they have such a beautiful uh look and a very tactical look and uh i know um just from reading your bio on your webpage that you've done and from watching you test your knives in your studio you definitely have some knife training. And I was trying to, is this Kali? What is he doing? Uh, but then reading, uh, you know, some Corsican style of knife fighting. Tell me about that. It was, it was really important for me. Um, I, I practiced some Eskrima before um, I started to make, to make blade. But mm -hmm. uh, that, for me, that makes sense to, to practice something around the Eskrima if I made some, like, some blade for, to protect yourself. It's like... It's like um, is like build build some car but without driving license that doesn't make any sense <laughs> yeah. so 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 it's for that i decided to to learn a little bit more about this and i and i learned that with different teacher in france um i have a chance to to uh, to to uh, to learn some stuff about some american teacher here who practice cali uh fcs cali so some my all the stuff all the escrima i practice is a mix between uh, indonesian filipino spanish escrima French is Krima too because I'm I have a chance to be a, a student of Fred Perrin concept. You know Fred oh, Perrin, yeah. Sure. yes, yeah. So 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 Fred Perrin, the huge huge skills, and uh, he's a really good teacher. And uh, his inspiration is a mix between lots of different kind of Krima from different land, and uh, and uh, and that is pretty good. I have a chance to uh, to design different kind of blade for really good um, martial artists too. So it's for that I have time to learn. And uh, to learn some stuff um, with, with them. So yes, it's a mix between different identity. I'm still a student, you know, no, uh, no, no big head. I'm not, a I'm not a, a teacher. I'm, I just like like to share sometimes my 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 all the stuff I learned in the past, and I continue to learn. 
um, because like you say, like you say, I make blade, but I love to use and test my blade too. So just to understand, because we need to understand the ergonomy, uh, to make a nice design is not enough for what I, what I love to do. You know, we need to understand what's going on in your hand when you take the blade, when you move like this, if the blades twist in your hand, if you imagine your blade gonna stab really well, gonna go inside the target, and because the geometry of the blade is completely weird, that don't go inside very well, so you have to change something. Just to, just to understand what's going on, and uh, that helps a little bit for sure to to know how to move, how to play, and uh, and uh, is always interesting because they have a huge evolution about escrima in the, in this industry. Every 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 day they have, they have something new to 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 learn. So it's really funny. You you talk about Fred Perrin. I I think he is so cool. I love his knives, and uh, I like watching him talk. He reminds me of Klaus Kinski, the actor, <laughs> just a younger version of him. But uh, Fred Perrin, in his designs, he's got this very interesting thing where, and I think he borrows this from traditional French knives, but instead of putting a, a guard on the knife, he makes the blade wide and the handle narrow so that the blade itself acts as a guard and a thrust. And uh, I see some of the some of those pointers in your knives. What kind of design influence have you gotten from uh, Fred Perrin? I think, uh, if I have to be honest with you, uh, Fred Fred was my huge, huge, huge influencer. Like for all the 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 the, the, the beginning, since the beginning, uh, like I, I'm gonna come back on Fred Perrin, but just to let you know, you know, my my process when I work on some blade, uh, you know, you you work with your memories, you make your design with what you need. You make a design with what you want to 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 draw, want to what you want to create. But you take a picture with your with your hand. Every time when you take something in your hand, your body take a picture. You know, you keep something in your mind, some sensation. And it's the same for your eyes. Imagine all the show I made uh, since twelve years. I take a picture with my eyes on all uh, each table. You know what I mean? So <laughs> too much too much files. Here. It's the same for everybody. You know. So the, 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 about Fred, um, I'm a huge fan uh, of Fred, uh, Fred Perrin since a while, and I have a couple of his knife. And, uh, and the, 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 the ergonomy, the, the dynamic of his blade was like a big, big inspiration. And not only, you know, the, the, the influence and the speech he had. I, um, all the, all the, the character around Fred Perrin was, uh, was a big inspiration for me after like 30 years. They don't have too much knife maker who can tell you the same story after after 30 years. Fred Perrin saw lots of knife makers started on this industry and crash completely. These guys stay on the same on the same line, you know what I mean? He stay he stay here. Everybody is a legend now. So he's, yeah. a, he's a really proud, really proud to be to be to be uh, to be one of his friends. But uh, Fred was a big inspiration of me for my for my few fixed blade I made, you know, with um, with um, like the red, the red fixed blade, you know, the the the, the finger, the first finger like this. Mm -hmm. I changed the ergonomy on the back uh, because in my hand, uh, some so, so, the, the ergonomy will be will be a little bit different for me, you know what I mean? And uh, and uh, that is that is a big drago, and yeah. the big drago is is really funny because it, it's perfect because you talk about this. The big drago was my first um, one cliff blade. And when I make this blade, uh, like a big one, I, I asked to Fred, I say, hey, bro, the, the, this blade, the, when I finish this blade, it looks like really close to your, to your PPT, the one you designed for, 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 for Spyderco, you know? And, and, uh, and I say, please, give me your advice. Give me what you think about this. I don't want to make a copy. And he tell me, he say, no, no, no. We, we saw clearly your identity on this blade. It's not a big deal for me. You can do that. But I, I still continue to say, yes, clearly, Bastian, you have, you have an they have some some DNA from 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 Fred somewhere. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it's like it's like clear. Well, I I would say uh, I mean I'm looking at it from the point of view uh, of of someone just holding a knife. I see I see that you don't use a guard and that you use the wider blade, the thinner handle, and the finger twirl. But it doesn't look like your knives don't look like Fred Perrin knives. And for everyone uh, listening, I just held up a big Drago tack, uh, which is an an awesome Warncliffe knife. Uh, that Bastien uh, designs and, and has produced. And uh, to me, it actually does not look like uh, the Fred Perrin PPT. You're talking about the Spyderco model. To me, it doesn't look like, because I mean, it, it, vaguely, it's a Warncliffe, but that's about it. Like the handle is different. The whole, the whole vibe is a yeah, little bit different. That is a goal. That is a goal. You know, um, you, you, it's like, it's like um, you can talk about inspiration. I like the idea to talk about inspiration because you have no, no bad stuff to think about inspiration. Mm -hmm. I, I, I try to, to find a balance every time. 
to find to find my good. I love uh, if I can use that. I love to use like the name of recipe. Each knife maker have his own recipe. Uh, mm-hmm. So you know when you cook, everybody cook with the same ingredient. We have exactly the same ingredient on the table. The difference is what kind of ingredient you choose and how many of these ingredients you're going to put on that. And I like the idea since 12 years to think about I have my own recipe and I try to keep the same DNA. Sometimes my blade can test a little bit close. The, the test can be close to the other one already made in the market by a good friend of me. Mm-hmm. But it's different, you know. I try to find this balance. And it's for that some people, when some people tell me, all the design was already made and uh, and uh, stuff like this. I'm not really I'm not really agree with that. You know, they, 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 they still have some good good recipe to do with some new kind of material, new kind of uh, mix between angle balance. Um, you know, they, they, everybody can find some new identity. Identity is really important. So Fred Fred Fred, Fred is a, is a was a good inspiration, and I was really lucky last year to have. Uh, my first real collaboration with him because on my happy I use this concept, you know, with the ring. Oh yeah, uh, and the, and the thing, yeah, yeah, the, the la grief, you know, uh, the, uh, the, yeah. the, the cloak. So you came out with a, a knife that was last year called the Harpy, and yeah. uh, it's got that. Um, if if people remember, um, there was a what was it called? The I don't remember what was it, but but there was a Fred Perrin knife that Cold Steel made for a short while that had that also had that. Yes, Emerson, Emerson blade made oh, the, oh, the, 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 the griff. Yeah, so you have that finger. So your uh, harpy is kind of like that, but it also has a a down sloping, almost karambit ish blade. And man, that thing looks nasty. Actually, you posted a, um, I believe you posted a picture of some sort of special operator that had one on his tactical vest on Instagram. That was cool to see. So you were talking about your process, and and uh, I, you know, I, I brought up Fred Perrin because he's a tactical French knife maker, but really like, I don't see your work as derivative from him. I see your work as always kind of an outcropping of older stuff you've done. You've made, I don't know, 20 or 30 designs now already. And many of them have gone into production and they all share, they all share your, your same design, uh, design language, but they all look different from one another and totally different from anyone else's work. What is your process for designing these things? Do you, do you have a, do you, do it on CAD? Do you draw? Like, what's your, how do you yeah, do Yeah, a lot. Uh, I, I draw a lot. I have, uh, I have plenty of book. Uh, you know, um, few of my ideas are directly in the book. Some ideas are good, some ideas are bad. So nobody's going to see this kind of stuff. Uh, but, but for the rest, um, yes, when I, when I feel something good, when I, when I feel a, a good dynamic on some drawing, I make a test in my shop. So generally, I'm, I take some piece of steel. I started to make the custom. And for each process, you know, every time is the same stuff. You can draw that look like good, that look like cool. You make the, 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 the 3D in, the, in your hand and say, oh, no, uh, like it's better on the drawings than in my hand. So you change some stuff and sometimes everything match, each step match. So at the end, when you have something like really good, who match perfectly with what you want, what you need, uh, and you make a test and all is on the same vibe, generally for that generally the, the process go on the full custom and after on the full industrial production but uh but yes yeah, so my process every time is is identity because my 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 man my the big challenge i have since the beginning was to find my own identity because this industry is huge between the knife company the big knife company the the knife makers the knife smiths from different parts of the of the world um just to to be sure if somebody Put 100 blade on the table without any logo. You can find mine like in few seconds. That was my. I, I, it's probably stupid for some people, but that was my challenge since the beginning. I and, and we try to keep this identity a little bit. Well, that's. Uh, I mean, that's the talk of an artist. An artist is always searching for a style, something recognizable, something that is uh, their own, and that and that um, becomes a unique language for expressing themselves. And you've translated that uh, into knives. When you after after you do these drawings, and now you're going to make, say, a prototype in your shop, or or maybe a custom in your shop. What do you do? Do you send steel to the water jet cutter and get blanks back and start working? Or oh no 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 we we don't we don't use uh, we use la- uh, water jets just for full custom only for one pieces since two months. We started to do that uh, two months ago with a company in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. For the one blade, the name is Arotac because it's a very symmetrical small dagger we made. 
And, uh, and uh, because to make symmetrical dagger, like when you want to make 20 pieces, <laughs> is, is, it can be a big challenge because if you eat a little bit more one side, you have to eat a little the other side. And at the end, the design is done. Suddenly you have a nice pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So only for this one. But now since the beginning, we, the, the only tool we use and when it's full on made, we order just the piece of steel. And uh, we, uh, I make my drawing with my Sharpie. I use my Bonso. And after I use my belt, like 80, uh, 80 uh, grind on the belt, on, mm -hmm. the, on the grinder, and I make my design like this, and I manage everything with the grinder and the, and the bonzo and some, some tool by hand. That is all the process. When I say full custom, it is really full custom. <laughs> no, no, like modern machine on it. That's, that's interesting because a lot of people... Uh, there's this uh, divide I'm sure you're aware of in the knife world. Maybe it's not a divide, but it's, it's a divide of opinion. Some people feel like a custom knife has to be the way you're, you're doing it. Taking the sheet, drawing it out uh, on sh uh, with Sharpie, cutting it out with your bandsaw, taking that 80 grit belt, shaping it, and then taking it all the way down to a finished level. And then other people will, will have a whole bunch of uh, blanks cut out in a water jet and you know have, have some of the more monotonous stuff taken care of. Um, and, and actually I don't have much of an opinion either way. I feel, uh, that if, if I were a custom knife maker and I had a lot of knives, I would water jet. And if I didn't, uh, or, or, or maybe if I had a, a certain process already dialed in, I would take it from scratch. Uh, to me, the scratch way seems like, um, the best bet, but like you said, there are some things that are challenging, like a perfect symmetry. Yeah, it's, a, it's, um, it's very, uh, it's very complicated speech, but, uh, but if I have to be honest with you to give you what I think about this, I think oh, everything is about Herx, you know, it's, it's about all the energy you put on it. If you, if you have like 10 steps made outside and you make the rest by your hand, you can put that custom if you want, because if you put lots of energy on it, it's, if, or if you make 10 blades like this and these 10, these 10 blades are completely different, it's okay, you know, they, they have no, but I understand if you are a nice miss, you are the guy you put the steel on the on the forge, work like during a few hours on the PC, you make two everything like full and made, and close to you on the other table, you have another guy who put two screw uh, and make one sharp and put the name like full custom on the blade. <laughs> I understand you can be sad, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, because it's, it's it's true, the job is completely different. But I know some people who make this process and use some some modern machine for some like quick process too. And um, and uh, and for me, it's still like really impressive custom because I saw some people who do that because they spend lots of time on other process too. You know, some guy who grind like crazy and uh, and uh, and makes some perfect polish, mm -hmm. very clean, symmetrical. Uh, they make some incredible handle and uh, and um, everything is about hurt and energy you put on it. That is the name of custom. To, to screw is not custom, you know what I mean. But for the rest, I don't care if it's water jet or or something like that. Everything is about earth and the energy you made on it. The know. heart and the energy. Yeah. I, and, and, you know, uh, some people, uh, knife nuts who've been collecting for a long time, start to recognize the spirit in the knives, uh, if you will. And um, I, I don't have too many custom knives. Well, I have two. I have two custom knives, but a large collection of production knives. And a lot of that is based on design. Whose designs do I like? Uh, who's producing them the best? And there's a, a level way up here is a custom knife. This is imbued with the most spirit of the artist, the most heart of the artist. And then as you go down to production, um, you know, naturally there's less and less. But uh, as, a, as a consumer who can't afford lots and lots of custom knives, I feel like if there's a company like Fox, for instance, who can offer the, the, the designs of someone I really admire, like you, for instance, that gives that production knife more soul, <laughs> you know, than just some anonymous production run of the mill kind of thing. Does that sound I, crazy? I, I, yeah, no, I understand that. I respect that. You know, everybody is different. You know, uh, some people like the idea to know one knife maker spend two days or three days on one week on one knife and deliver me this blade and this blade is unique, is for me. Uh, and, and some people love this sensation, love the idea to have something unique. Uh, and um, some people don't care completely about where from the blade, who made it. They want just a really good blade and, and, and that's it, you know, that's just an identity and that's it. So I respect all the, this, both, uh, this both side and, um, and um, everybody is different because everybody is different. This market, this industrial market is here for some identity 
And the custom market, the full custom market is, a, is here for another kind of identity mm. too. So right. it's for that the blade show, the blade show is, is a, all blade show, all knife show are incredible for that because if you don't find something good in the table in your left, check on your right, probably you have something good for you, you know, that is, that is great. Right, right. So collaborations, you've done a lot of collaborations and a yeah. number of them with, with some serious heroes of mine like Fred Mastro and Doug Markaida. What's it like working with, um, well, non-knife makers, but uh, people who are knife aficionados, users, uh, experts, what's it like taking their, their design input? You know, um, my example with Doug Marquetta, because Doug Marquetta was my, probably my first huge, big collaboration. You know? I'm sorry, you said who? Doug Marquetta? Doug Marquetta. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Doug Marquetta was my first huge collaboration because he was a very famous martial artist before to be a, a very famous judge on uh, History Channel, you know, on Forge yeah. Fire. And, uh, and um, yes, um, when, when, when some people like this come to you and say, yes, you know, I want, I feel, I want something like that. I would like, I have some idea about this. They give you some, some ID, you know, do come just an example. Good. Do come for the first time, just with a old picture of broken scissor, <laughs> just a whole picture of broken scissor. The, the scissor was ugly, nothing crazy, but uh, he sent me that. He say, what you think about this, what you can do with that. And he gave me like a few days. And after a few days, I designed the picker. I made the my picker. own, and yeah, the picker. I made my own interpretation about the broken scissor, the, his ID. And, um, and uh, it's, it's for that, it's really funny when you think about this, he can come, he can see like probably like um, 10 different knife maker and send them the same picture and say what you can do with that. Probably you can have 10 different design because it's my own interpretation about this. This design is my design. But uh, it's my design for Doug Marquetta. This design was not possible without Doug because he come to me and asking me about this. And, uh, and, uh, and this connection was like really good because, you know, it's, it's weird to imagine some people have some ID and you, every time when you send some drawings, the people say, no, I don't like that. No, I don't want that. So no. So let me just tell uh, listeners, if they don't know what the Picura looks like, it's, it's like a straight karambit with a little scalpel blade at the end. It is yeah. a nasty little thing, and you can hide it in all sorts of places, but it's a full hand grip. Um, yeah. Unlike, yeah. unlike the diagnostic, which is a, a little two-finger karambit that I'm absolutely in love with, and uh, I sent you a picture today. It rides on the back of my work ID, this ID. I am a tagged human. I have to carry this around my office, but at least I get to hide a little cute little karambit behind it. And I say cute, but this thing is nasty. It's, it's, it's chisel ground. It's small, curvy D2. And it's like a little claw. And, and mostly, I use it for opening boxes or letters. Every once in a while, I have to vanquish a foe or fight off a horde. But uh, uh, pretty much, it's just for opening envelopes. So when you go to design a knife for, okay, say, uh, um, Fred Mastro, another knife, uh, another martial artist that you collaborated with, now, the PY, um, our good friend Ian that we were talking about before, uh, has a PY and, uh, and the trainer, and I've had, had a chance to use it. It's a very different knife than the Pecor, the first, uh, the first collaboration. Different identity. Did, yeah, yeah, different identity. So, so Doug Markaida came, with you, came to you with a pair of broken scissors. What did Fred Mastro say to you when he said, I want a, a knife from you? You know, um, I'm, the PY was already a design I made in the past, and um, I don't make too much. I was like, I, I made like probably um, two or three PY, but a short one. And uh, when I crossed Fred Mastro at the short show, I, um, I show him this blade and say, you know, I love this blade. The only stuff I would like, I would like this blade a little bit longer, uh, you know, for the handle. And I would like the blade a little bit longer like this, but same profile, same kind of stuff. So I come back to my shop. I decided to change a little bit some detail, like he asked him. I make a prototype. And he, he feel perfectly in his end. So the story started like this. Fred have different kind of skills too, like impressive skills, mm -hmm. different background than 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 um, different history and background than uh, Doug Marquetta. So it's all that the blade is different. All the collaboration I made, every time, it's uh, it's just the beginning of something new, and uh, and uh, it's not possible. I don't want to make uh, 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 ten collaboration, make ten exactly the same blade. You know that don't make any mm -hmm. sense. It's gonna be stupid. So I'm lucky for the moment, each people I, I, I met, they asking me to work with them, uh, asking me completely different kind of design. So it, it's, it's really cool. And I have plenty of ideas, so yeah. 
Yeah, well, plenty of ideas. You can tell from looking at your website. <laughs> Uh, you also had yeah. you also did a, a collaboration with Jared Wehangi. The uh, um, uh, he's from Brazil, I believe, right? Uh, he's uh, he, he's not from Brazil. Uh, he's uh, he's um, step family is from Brazil. His wife from from Brazil, but uh, he's uh, he's a police officer in Utah. Okay, in and Utah. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's a very big. Uh, he he's, does a lot of training, uh, training uh, police departments and such, and and obviously he's a instructor. Yeah. Right. And and from watching his watching him on Instagram, he's he's pretty incredible. And you recently released a push dagger with him. So why do all of these people come to you, uh, uh, Bastien? I mean, you have um, three of the I top think, guys I, in that industry coming to you. What's that about? Um, I think it's probably because of the of the connection I have uh, and uh, and uh, the identity of my blade. You know, when I when like you say, when I when you see my blade, probably you you you, you can read some message uh, inside this blade. Uh, and um, and after the people come to to me and talk with me probably and, 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 and like and like probably the idea I, I share with them and uh, and uh, and yes you know some, I already met some people and the connection was not like pretty good and we decided to go on different way uh, that's happened sometimes you know uh, but uh, but uh, yes I'm I'm really happy to work with this kind of people you know, connection you know the, the connection this. I have I have this um, this huge connection since probably the beginning when I started to work with uh, Funker Tactical. Mm-hmm. Um, Funker Tactical was a completely new way for me, you know, with Paulo Simo uh, with um, with Paulo Rubio, and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, yes, he, he, this team introduced me, make lots of connection yeah. for me, and after you know there's, there's, that's uh, that was the beginning of lots of stuff. Um, Paulo, Doug, Fred Mastro. Jared Yongi and uh, and step by step uh, different people and you know all the show we made is a good chance for us to to meet different people too so yeah yeah Funker Tactical if you don't know uh, GN he's got an amazing channel too he's it's like he travels the world looking for the the best martial arts uh, ways he's kind of like training himself over the years not training himself seeking out the training of masters all around the world sort of uh, assimilating that through his media channel he's an interesting dude I gotta say. Uh, so you recently came out with something with Microtech that I yeah. got to say, oh, my God, I saw that thing and I was like uh, blown away. And what it is, people, if you don't know, it, it is, it's an automatic karambit, uh, the iconic. Yeah. And it is, first of all, I mean, it's based on a, on a fixed blade karambit that is quite beautiful and very stylish. And then uh, Mr. Marfioni turned it into an automatic with the button on the other end over by the ring how how shocking and cool tell me about the process of working with microtech and getting that thing done uh, so first i was like a kid you know imagine a french knife maker like me and uh, and arrive in the united states and microtech is like huge uh, huge company and i'm a huge fan of microtech since the beginning and uh, and uh, to, to be the probably the first knife knife maker french knife maker to to, to design for them was a big honor for me and after that, yes, um, the process was Tony asking me to come in the in the microtech company. He showed me the table and he, he gave me the paper and say, "Yes, draw me something." <laughs> so, so if I, I, you know, I was ready because I do that like every time. So mm-hmm. I say, "Okay." So I take the pen and I started to draw the the the, the, the iconic uh, fixed blade first. Mm-hmm. And um, and after that, uh, I'm the same same because I stay like during four days uh, in the microtech uh, company. Mm-hmm. And the uh, same week, I decided to to design the the the, the iconic auto. Uh, but uh, it was easy for me to design something. You know, imagine I have a paper. I have just to draw everything I want. I say I'm going to put the <laughs> bottom here. You're going to do that. I'm Figure it out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and with no idea about the complication and about the challenge going to be for Microtech to 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 make this process. And um, if you check the first process, the first drawing, the drawing exactly the same than the production. I said to Tony, we have to put the bottom just here because it's going to be really close to the finger, really easy access. But I say, yes, the, the, the blade is here, the opening system is here. The saber, it's not, it's not my business, it's yours now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 and, and, to, and Tony looked at me and say, yeah, it's not a big deal, we're going to do that. Like, like n- no way for, 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 for microtech team to tell me, you know, uh, it's going to be probably complicated. We will see. No, directly it was, it's not a big deal. We can do that. We already have different ID and, uh, and uh, they have incredible, incredible team over there. How you have cool. no ID. I, I, <laughs> I, I kind of do because I have some of their knives, but man, that's cool. So 
that that to them presented no problem. That was probably a fun every challenge. Thing, oh, every, the button at the other end. And your stuff you have to know, probably you don't know that, but when some people tell you everything is made in USA over there, is made in USA. The small screw you have like this is made by them. Yeah. No, it's true. It's not like screw from outside. It's not like a handle from other, other ways. Everything is made by them. You see the, the laboratory about the full Polish uh, blade, full custom blades they made over there. The work is crazy. It's crazy. Incredible team. Incredible team. Like really. Microtech is a love I found recently. I'd say over the last mm, three or four years. And I've accumulated only about four or five, well, four at this point. Uh, but I have a couple of really nice pieces. And uh, man, I want more. And and I really would love that automatic karambit, uh, the, the iconic, because I know just a tiny bit of karambit, like just enough to make me dangerous to myself. <laughs> and I feel like that knife would be a real feather in my cap, you know. So in terms of other makers, okay, so we've we've talked a, a little bit about Fred Perrin and uh, we talked about Microtech. Who are the other makers who are making knives that excite you, that uh, inspire you? I have I have a good friend of me. His name is uh, Pierre-Henri Monet. He's a French guy, and he make completely different blade you can imagine. He make primitive blade. He make a bones with uh, some like really old school Bowie. Mm. This guy was a big inspiration for me, it's, and and he, he he helped me for some step. He helped me to understand some process about convex grind. He was the guy who, 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 who helped me to love convex grind because you know all like ninety percent of my blade is the convex grind, and uh, and uh, yeah, this process is. That. Yeah, yeah. All the all the full custom we made, we make hollow grind, we make chisel grind, but for generally for all the current bits, it's convex. Mm -hmm. So everything is like very thin convex, and I learned that with him. So what do you find is the benefit from convex? Because I already test different kind of blade, and uh, and uh, and uh, when you check the difference uh, for the same geometry, I already make some current bit with uh, with a flat ground. Mm -hmm. I make current bit with chisel, and I make current bit with uh, with a convex, and every time the sensation you have in your hand for some cut and different target okay it can be like um jeans and meats and it can be a paper it can be a cardboard it can be everything some resistance on the target on the on the dummy you know every time you feel in your hands this kind of the, the blades slide directly uh, on it and the sharp the sharp the sharp stay like a little bit stronger uh, in some part when you have some contact with the bones when you have some contact with some very strong parts because the sharp, the geometry on the sharp is like a little bit like bumpy, you know, a little bit that not like flat like this. Uh, that helps a little bit to keep the, 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 the sharp strong. So it's, um, I feel in love with this one and it's a really old school uh, grind, you know. Yeah. It's convex is from like really, really, really in the past. Well, so, I know yeah. that uh, uh, a lot of outdoorsmen like uh, convex grind. It's tough. It's sharp. It gives a little bit more meat behind the edge but it also slips you know you don't have that uh you don't have that um hard angle at the top of the edge it just kind of kind of curves around uh but you so in at least in the states here you see a lot of convex grinds with camp knives and big knives and um you know knives like bark river and outdoors knives but so rarely do you see them on tactical knives and I'm just going to call your knives tactical knives because it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay, uh, our buddy Ian came to your shop and he had a red a red folder, and you said, "Let me give you a little special edge on that," and you convexed it. And when he showed it to me, I was like, "This is highly irregular, a tactical knife with a convex blade. How about that?" But oh my god, I mean, I I would have to say that uh, the three knives I have of yours, I have the compact and then the big Drago Tech. Uh, these are just the first ones, mind you, but they are very thin and slicey knives. So they're meant for robust applications, but the blades really, I mean, you could, you, you could use them just as easily in a kitchen and they would work beautifully. Yeah. You, you know, because I think it's because we're from France and, uh, and uh, in France, all is forbidden. And, you know, because all is forbidden, you have to, to, to build something thin, light and comfortable. Mm. And the idea to carry something heavy, something like not with a good balance, is not part of our mentality. That don't mean all the blade with a, with a big thickness, something like a big tool, something like that. I know lots of companies like to build this kind of strong, big blade with a big thickness. That mm. don't mean that is bad. It's just not our mentality, our vision about blade. 
But yes, generally the blade we made, except like two, probably two design we made for different people, uh, are generally are really thin, very light. Uh, and the tactical blade is you talk about tactical blade. Uh, the red for the red fixed blade I made for the French uh, SWAT team. You know the red. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, imagine all the heavy equipment they carry all day long. They have like ammo. They have the plate carrier. They have everything. They have like thirty right, kilos. Big well. vests and all the arms it, and it's ammunition. It's heavy. Crazy. More 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 than with the helmet and stuff. They are more than thirty kilo on the on the back. Is crazy. So to, 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 to build for them some blade, like some heavy blades that don't make any sense. They want something just to, to go to stab or to cut, to use like a cutting tool, or sometimes if that's happened to use like a weapon, but generally it's more like a tool, like 90, 97% of all the people I know use a blade like a tool more yeah. than a weapon. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it is better like this, you know, but, uh, but uh, yes, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, something light and comfortable and, we try a little bit elegant, a little bit. So who, who's your customer? I mean, I, I, I know, I know we talk about the tactical pe people and they're 3% and I know I've seen your knives in movies, right? Yeah. Haven't I seen yeah. the red in, in, uh, what was that in resident see, evil or something? Uh, no, uh, no, you, you see, you see the Raptor L on Lucy movie with okay. Scarlett Johansson. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That's what it and, is. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Besides the movies, which is pretty cool. And besides uh, these tactical operators that are running around with your knives, who are the people who are buying your knives? So you have, uh, like you say, you have the military and police uh, law enforcement to buy that. And you have all the people who dream to be a military and law enforcement too. You know? And uh, you have the, 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 the knife addicts, you know, the, yeah. like, 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 you know, like all the people who, who love blades, this knife industry in the world, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about knife industry in the world and knife addiction in the world are huge. And, um, and it's just like a test. You know, everybody loves different kind of blade for different kind of reason. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and, and I'm really lucky because uh, my blade is not for everybody. I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay with that. And I'm pretty honest with what I do. Some design like, like very big angle. Uh, they have this kind of very specific design. So, so not too much people like my blade, but it's for that I'm focused about people who love it. So I try to, mm -hmm. to take care of them. And, uh, and, uh, and the, yes, knife addiction, um, professional in different kind of place. And, uh, and yes, some dreamer, you know, some people who love, who love some kind of blade. I, I think I fit in all of those categories, probably the dreamer and the knife addict the most. But <laughs> me, too, uh, me too, me too, don't worry. <laughs> So, but you're, you're, you're saying that, um, not too many people love your knives, but I think that's an exposure issue because to look at your knives, they're, um, they're just, I mean, they're very elegant and beautifully designed and you don't have to be uh, a knife aficionado to recognize that, uh, the small drag attack or the drag attack compact is my, whenever I drive longer than an hour in the car, this is what I carry. Because it's got a glass breaker, and I think it's cool. And my wife likes this knife. And to me, that means, oh, we're crossing over. Like, this is a universal knife. So I think that your, your designs are, are pretty, pretty universal across. And then, and then you have something like social media. You have Instagram to show these things off. How, how, much, has, how much has Instagram, social media, and that kind of thing, how, how much has that affected and helped your business, would you say? I think if I, if I don't make any mistake, uh, I was the first... French knife maker who used social media since 12 years like a tool to talk about my blade. Huh. Uh, you know, at the beginning, I used uh, YouTube to talk about my collection. And after when I started to make like 12 years ago to make my own blade, I use YouTube to show some stuff, to show how I forge, how I make the blade and step by step. And, and it was huge. Um, um, if I have to be really honest with uh, what I do, it's uh, social media helped me to be more, um, I don't know if I can use this kind of expression, more on the light than some people who make the job since a while. That don't mean I deserve to be on the light more than the, some people. So that means only I know how to use some tool to talk about my, my, my blade. And, and, and social media help me and help a lot today. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and it's for that every time when I work on different kind of show, you saw some people with incredible skills. They build some blade. I need probably two life to make this kind of blade like this. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. But these people are not too much famous. And because probably they don't know how to use this kind of tool, deserve to be famous more than me. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but, but in the knife industry, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, yes, social media help a lot today. You can, be, you, can, you can start to make knife tomorrow in your garage. And in one year, you can be like in the show because social media is a big exposure. Everybody, if you have this kind of good balance, how to use a tool, social media is magic for that. Yeah, yeah, it is just another tool. And it's not just a tool for putting your, putting, shining the light on yourself and 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 that, but it's also a great way uh, for people to learn about processes. And uh, you go on YouTube University and learn about how to make knives these days. Not yeah. not that not that you can um, substitute the actual experience of doing that with a mentor in an actual shop. But if you don't have that, if you don't have a knife shop or someone you could be with, you can go on YouTube and learn. It is it is pretty amazing. Um, yeah. and, and, and with your stuff, uh, with your Instagram channel, I love it. I got to say your, your Instagram is always, it's, well, there's always special attention paid to the photography. It always looks good. And occasionally there's some hot babe holding your knife and I'm like, Hmm, this makes this knife even better. <laughs> but, but I mean, that like, is that, funny. that is funny. You say that because, uh, sorry, I, I just uh, get a little bit because. When, when, if you share my, if you, if you check on my Instagram, uh, generally I, between seven and 10 picture, I share a picture with a model, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, but between these two models, they have like seven or 10 picture with my blade on the table, with me, with my gun and something like that. Right. And during the show, it was a Los Angeles show like two years ago. Uh, one lady come and his husband say, oh, uh, he introduced me and s something like that. And she say, yes, you know, Bastini. And I say, no, I don't know. He say, uh, she say, you know, the guy who shared the picture with the lady and the, 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 the model. He say, oh, man, I love you. <laughs> and, 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 that 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 is uh, that started to be a little bit our identity. So, you know, it's, it's for that. It's, for, it's, it's really funny how people keep in their mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the, the the impact of um, you know you know better than me the the the, the impact of women uh, in the in the in the brain of some some people so that yeah. is like a tattoo it's like it's <laughs> like a tattoo in your <laughs> it'll make it stick what can I say it's not every and and I hadn't thought about this until right now but it's not every um, knife design that could pair well with a model and uh, that sound I don't know how that sounds but sometimes you know seeing the little pecour or the or the um, or the diagnostic on, on someone's garter belt. It's just like, oh, well. <laughs> People have to watch two times a picture generally. So it's, it's, really, it's really funny. <laughs> First they watch the picture and after they try to find the blade. So thanks, <laughs> thanks to, my, to my bro Rob Cano to do this kind of stuff and, and, uh, and, uh, and other photographer and model for us. Yes, they make incredible job. So, so recently uh, you've put out a couple of knives that have really interested me. That, that Bowie is pretty cool looking. Uh, yeah, and, the and Montana. Then, the Montana, yeah, good name actually. And then, and then uh, the most recent one, it, it's I can't remember what it's called, but it's got a big fat belly and a recurve, and it looks kind of like a shrunk down um, uh, uh, talibong, you know, like a, a Filipino kind of kind of sword, uh, a knife. What is that? And and where are you going? It seems like your your fixed blades are getting larger. With with the with the curve and stuff like this you talk mm -hmm. about the reaper or something like that oh no no no, not that now he's no, holding no, up a yeah. he's holding up a tact uh right now bastien is holding up a tactical comma for me comma is that yeah. japanese sickle weapon and that is just ridiculously cool as is the separateur your your take on the uh yeah. thing. the filipino filipino oh, inspiration yeah god i love yeah. that i love that thing i i must have one of those soon <laughs> uh but no i'm talking about the one uh it's a it's a it's blade maybe seven inches, six inches, uh, and it's got a, a deep belly. But what I'm getting at is it looks like your knives are trending a little bit larger. Is that is that happening or am I just imagining that? I, I live in the United States now, and that is probably the problem, you know, because because, you know, more, more I, I make some adaptation where I live. When you live in France, you have to make something smaller, something light. And because you are here and say, yeah, man, you can carry that free. You know, you can big blade on my back and I'll get, carry my gun here and get my bowie here. And some people give you some crazy ideas. So you say, yes, OK, why not? So yeah. I keep I keep my I keep my 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 my, my discreet and, and, and French touch a little bit. But uh, but uh, yes, I, I love the idea to to uh, to to build to put my expression a little bit some on some bigger pieces 
Yeah. But I tr- I try to keep some something like light because you know I'm I'm not a big guy too. You know, generally mm-hmm. if you check if you check generally the, the big dude, big knife maker, you know, generally have this kind of big blade yeah. and uh, carry identity. So I'm I, I still a, a light guy, you know, not I'm a little bit skinny. So probably it's for that my blade still like light, you know. Yeah. So when you came out with the separator, which I think is a I mean, I'm not exactly sure how it how it translates into French, but I have a feeling it's like separator, like you're separating things with that blade. Oh my! Yeah. yeah. So when that came out, I I could barely believe my eyes, and my friend Ian, uh, who's been a guest on the show, actually showed it to me, and I, I had a chance to uh, you know do a little bit of twirling with it, and that thing is my God! I mean, I I feel like people should have that. You know, every house should have one for home protection. You know, maybe every sh- soldier or every third soldier should have one of those on their back ready to go. I really, really, really like that. Uh, that's probably the next Bastinelli I'm going to get. So if I had to ask you, uh, as we wind yeah. down, if I had to ask you, if you had to pick one of your knife designs and that's your baby and then the rest of them have to just go away, what is your favorite? I see your eyes widen. I know that's hard to pick, but what is your absolute favorite of your designs? Um if if uh, if I if it depend <laughs> depend if you talk about earth uh, something who, who, who gonna touch me or something I'm gonna take this knife because this knife gonna be good good on different kind of situation for my life you know okay this is what so. we're gonna say we're gonna say I want your favorite knife that is your most personal artistic expression and then I want the knife uh, I want you to tell me what knife you would take or what what one of your creations you would take into hell. Um, yeah, in the hell, um, in the hell, if I have to be honest with you, probably it's gonna be like um, the, the the red the red fixed blade. I think the red fixed blade gonna be like the 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 one the one I'm gonna carry everywhere and take with me because this size, this ergonomy are good for lots of place. Plus the history about this blade, this connection, my 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 the possibility to design some this blade for some incredible for your uh, special unit in France, mm-hmm. uh, and um, all the story around this blade uh, push me um, push me on another step on on this on this uh, on this knife industry. So um, yeah, this blade probably gonna be uh, gonna be uh, gonna be my my. Um, my, my my blade but uh but all the blade all the blade i made have a specific story all connection and all collaboration i made a specific story but this one was made like probably six years or seven years ago now and uh was the beginning of lots of stuff so yeah <laughs> it's cool to think of a bunch of badass french special forces guys walking around with this stylish knife I mean, you know, I'm lucky. I'm lucky, you know, because I have some SWAT team here in the United States who work work with that too, and uh, and uh, and some SWAT team contact me and say we want to to do some pieces like this for us too. So I make the logo on the SWAT team on that, and uh, oh. and uh, really proud, you know, really proud because you know, in the knife, in the knife, in the knife, uh, knife community, and particularly in France, we 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 grew up with American movie. Mm. So when you have American soldier. Uh, American police who come to see you and asking you some blade, you say, wow. <laughs> Plus, they're saying, Bastien, I trust you with my life. Make me a knife. You're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. It's good. That is that is very cool. Okay, so uh, tell me, what is the future of Bastinelli Creations? What can we expect from, from you and your knives in the future? You know, the, the for, for us, it's going to be to... to, uh, to um, to develop a little bit, I wanted to 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 have more more people inside this uh, this family, and um, same way, you know, to continue to have some lots of connection with different kind of people. I have uh, each, like I tell you, each collaboration I made every time is a good story and uh, good memories. And you know, I'm I'm really lucky to wake up every morning and do what I love to do. So that is that is what I expect. I hope I hope that's gonna happen again uh, uh, during a few years uh, and. Uh, because I'm lucky, you know, I know where I am and uh, I, uh, I, I know it's not, not, not too much people can do that. Wake up at the morning, go in some office, see exactly the same face every day and say, I, I, I'm really happy to come back home. And, uh, <laughs> and so, yes, you know, it's, it's, I'm lucky. So it's for that. I, I enjoy this life. I enjoy, um, I, I enjoy that. I continue to, 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 to put lots of energy to share that with all the people who want to share that with me. And, that's it, you know. Take care of this, uh, of this uh, small family company, and uh, and that is uh, all the wish, you know. 
All right on. Well, Bastien Coves of Bastinelli Knives, Bastinelli Creations, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. I feel like I have a, a lot of more things I want to talk to you about, but that'll have to be in a in a future on a future date. When I, you want, I'm ready. <laughs> awesome. I, I love your work. Thank you for everything you do. And I'm just going to spend a lot of time and money trying to accumulate more. <laughs> so thank you for coming on thank the show. Thank you so sir. much. Thank you so much for your time and we stay in touch. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. Call the Knife Junkie at 724-466-4487 with your questions or comments. All right, back on the Knife Junkie podcast, episode number 130. Great interview, Bob, there. Yeah. Uh, Bastinelli Creations, Bastinelli Knives. Uh, yeah, but he comes up with a new design so frequently. I'm, I'm just constantly watching him come up with new things. And like a, uh, you know, like a true artist, he keeps... He keeps his uh, important work in his repertoire, and and he he won't stop making that stuff. Mm -hmm. But he's always kind of on to a new design, and I love that. And the inspirations from uh, the the kind of knives that he takes his inspirations from just make for some really beautiful, elegant, graceful, uh, wicked-looking things. And Mm -hmm. uh, I love them. And incidentally, they're very, very comfortable and hand and useful as regular EDCs. I always stress how kind of menacing they can be but in reality they're just great tools well go to his uh, website and you'll see a great menacing looking picture of the uh, the logo and everything where he has links to facebook instagram and youtube of course we'll have all those links in our show notes that you can find at the knife junkie.com slash 130 the knife junkie.com slash 130 It's going to wrap it up for our interview show today. I encourage you to join us again Wednesday for the midweek supplemental episode of the podcast and Thursday for Thursday Night Knives on YouTube at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. So for Mr. Knife Junkie himself, Bob DeMarco, I'm the knife noob over here, Jim Person, saying thanks for joining us on the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.